Welcome back. Today I'm just going to do a quick video going over the one of the nonlinearities I described in my last video, which is going to be the material nonlinearity and how it can really affect your results for buckling. So here's a situation. Let's just say right here that we've got a simple square cross section beam. It'll be hollow. It'll have a given thickness to it. Let's say each of these sides is one inch. And this thickness is one eighth of an inch. And we'll also say that <clears throat> This beam is going to be doing a, doing a hard time drawing straight lines today, but we'll give it a one foot length here. Okay, so this is our simple beam. And now that we have that, we're gonna do just some math related to this beam. So we're gonna take, and we're going to assume the material is going to be um, 7075 aluminum, which means its elastic modulus will be um, about almost 11,000 KSI or for metric, for those of you that would prefer to see metric, I'll go ahead and, and show this in gigapascals. It'll be about 70, almost 74 gigapascals. And again, this is for 70, 75 aluminum. And I got this off of a public source. Um, don't worry about that for now. As I mentioned before, the length of the side is gonna be one inch. The wall thickness is going to be one eighth of an inch. And just to help, I'll give these in millimeters. Okay. Now, to calculate the area of the cross section, because um, what we care about is two things. We want to know the total area here, that helps us actually figure out the stress that's in the material when it's under compressive load. And we also need to know the second moment of inertia, which is what, what we really care about for buckling. So, <clears throat> sorry, let's go back here. So to calculate the area of the section, we will just need to know first the area of the outer square here. This should be pretty familiar with you if you've done any structural calcs. And then the we're gonna subtract out the area of the hollow area in the middle. So each of those lengths of those sides is the length of the side minus two times the wall thickness. So there we go. So there's the cross-sectional area that matters for the um, the stress. The moment of inertia is a square, um, which is just a variant of a rectangle, and that's always one twelfth times um, base times the height cubed, and that height and the base depends on what direction you're bending it. Because it's a square, it doesn't really matter. So for the outer portion of that square, you just have the the length of the side the power of fourth. And then for the hollow portion, which you're subtracting out, you have the length of the side minus two times the wall thickness again, just like we did for area. And takes it fourth. And so there we go. There's your moment of inertia. And I'll show in metric as well. Give it some sane units. Let's see, what is that in millimeters? 
Nah, it's not too bad in millimeters. No, it's also showed that in millimeters. Just to help all you metric users. So let's do centimeters and fourth. That's a little bit more reasonable. Okay. <clears throat> Again, we are our beam. Length of beam is going to be one foot. As we said before, just going back to this little picture, one foot beam, one inch cross section squared, one eighth inch thick everywhere. Okay, so all those, those are our main geometrical inputs. Now the tick bolt beam formula, I'm just going to um, ignore any, right now I'm going to ignore the um, the factor here and consider just the constraint, consider the fact that we can use this simple formula for buckling. It's going to be proportional to this depending on your end constraints. So there's pi squared times your um, compressive modulus times your moment of inertia of your section over the length of the beam or column squared. Now what would matter is depending on your constraints this length is going to change some. But right now let's just let's just use this basic formula ignore that just for humor's sake just for this example. So we'll say that this beam um, when you use simple Euler buckling, it can take 41, four, almost 42,000 pounds of force, or in metric, that's, let's do kilonewtons. It's a little bit more understandable. 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 Okay, about 186 kilonewtons. The corresponding stress in that case is just going to be that critical load divided by the area of the cross section that we calculated before. And that gives you about 95 KSI. That's that's pretty high for aluminum. That's I'm pretty sure that's above the yield strength. So that that's a problem. It says the beam says it can take this huge load, but your stress is actually really high in that case. And and this is typical when you have a <clears throat> when you have a a structure like an aerospace, which is optimized for strength and low weight, you highly load the compressive member and stress. You want a huge moment of inertia with very little material. So yeah, it's nice and stiff, but you're functioning very close to yield stress of material if you're utilizing it well. This is great in tension when you only have to worry about tension, but for buckling, it's problematic. And that, that is the reason behind the video. So there we go, we have a really high, really high stress. So obviously this would not work right away, but our formula and I at least says this, whatever. So what is what is our actual allowable then? If, if we can't use the something this highly stressed and our critical load says actually we can use it, what matters then? You, you, you would say, well, we have to design below yield stress. Okay, fine, whatever. But how do you actually find out approximately where you'd expect us to fail. <clears throat> so that's where we need a little bit more data. So I looked up some values of kind of what's typical for this um, tangent modulus for 7075 aluminum. So we'll make a little chart here. And I'm just naming these variables because I'm going, what I'm gonna do with this table is I'm going to use a linear interpolation function so that when I want to calculate a um, tangent modulus for any given stress, I can just use my function built into MathCAD that I've programmed already so I don't have to go through and manually iterate that part. Uh, MathCAD is pretty handy, it lets you do these things. I'm just using the um, trial right now because I haven't I haven't bought it. I've just used it a lot in the past, and I find it extremely handy program for especially when you're going back and forth between units. It keeps you out of a lot of trouble that way. So what this shows is starting at um, zero stress near compressive modulus. I mean, 
according to this chart is a little bit less than, than what I used up above. That's fine. But as your stress increases, notice how quickly your tangent modulus drops. So that right there says, well, this 95 KSI, they, we, can, we can never even design that. We can never actually build this and expect that to form in that, perform in that capacity. <clears throat> so then what we do, we make this, this function, uh, your tangent modulus, and that's going to be, tangent modulus is going to be a function of stress. And we're gonna use a linterp, which is a linear interpolation function in MathCAD. And there we go. So what it does is it linear interpolates. When you give it a stress, it finds out where that stress is on this table, and then it linear interpolates a value using that table. It's pretty nice. So our initial guess here of our strength, which is just what we have up above, let me just say is P crit. Sorry, P crit. So we've already got that. So it's just re showing it again. So as it gets a little bit more crowded, it's a little bit easier to see. So about 42,000 pounds again. Um, now what I need though is a guess, is a guess value because I'm gonna have to iterate, at least because I'm not using the fancy solving tool MathCAD right now. I've got to guess what the allowable actually is. So let's, let's guess right now Okay, this load takes us well over the yield strength of material. So let's guess about half that. So let's guess about 20,000 pounds is our guess load as we iterate through this process. And our stress due to that guess is going to be the um, guess value over the cross-sectional area. So there we go. We have a stress about 45 KSI. So we're somewhere in here. We should expect a, a modulus mm, high nines, closer to 10. And now we use our new function for tangent modulus. And that gives us, what does that give us? Yeah, about nine nine thousand five hundred KSI. So now, using this new tangent modulus, we can go and calculate the new critical buckling load of this, just using tangent modulus. We're not, we're not taking into account any geometrical nonlinears. We're just taking into account the fact that, oh yeah, now we're going to use the tangent modulus. Again, all these other geometrical parameters are the same because we're not using nonlinear geometry. We're not changing the length. We are just using those same values. The only thing we changed is a tangent modulus. Okay, so using that, we find a new critical load. That's 37,000 pounds. That's a little bit different from our initial guess. The, the trick is here, we, what we want is we want this guess value to equal what we get out of this formula. That's that's part, that's what we really want out of any kind of nonlinear solving. And there's, there's good techniques and numerical methods to do this, but we're doing this by hand right now, just, just to give an example and work through it. So what I'm doing now is just taking a ratio of the initial guess value to what we, to what we um, originally, actually what we recalculated with a modified modulus. So, and let's see, I did not type that properly. I always have to check this in MathCAD. And I don't know how to spell tangent more than once. Okay, there we go. So this gives us a weird, weird value. And that's because our initial guess wasn't super great. Um, so it looks like these need to come close together. So I need to guess a little bit of higher lows. So I'll change my guess. Um, I'll guess 30,000 pounds. What does that get us? So if I guess 30,000 pounds, that shoots the new tangent load way low. And that's because it stuck us out here. Let's see our stress increased 
when I use 30,000 pounds, our stress decreased to about um, 68, 69,000 KSI, which dropped our modulus quite a bit and dropped our capacity quite a bit. So this guess is way lower. So we already guessed 20,000. We just guessed 30,000. So that means we're probably somewhere in between now because 20,000 was too low, 30,000 was too high. Let's guess 25,000. Oh, we are getting pretty close. That's actually that's actually a pretty close value. We're we're getting pretty close. Um, so now we guessed what was that twenty five thousand. Let's try one more time. Let's crank it up to twenty five one hundred. Ah, eh, no, we overshot it. Let's go twenty fifty. So let's do twenty five one hundred. Was that a guess? 25050. Still a little bit high. They're not they're not quite matching here. Let's do try 20. Ooh, there we go. We got pretty close. <clears throat> so we're within a fraction of a percent. So our initial our initial load that we just calculated um, using naively ignoring tangent modules and everything wasn't very informative, but it gave us a value of 41, almost 42,000 pounds allowable. But we need to do some extra information, including tangent modulus, to inform how your change and increase in stress of material drops your modulus. You now have a more, better close, more close to reality um, guess of the buckling load of about 25,000 pounds. That's rapidly approaching a, a factor of, of two on what you calculate in a critical load. Um, and that's actually more, more informative to you because now you have a critical buckling load that's, that's related to your yield stress. Whereas if you ignore this tangent modulus effect, you just don't have that information at all. So that'll, that'll be it for today. This is only the, the first part here where we're talking about the more easy thing to do usually, which is the uh, nonlinear material part of buckling. So I'll see you next time.